So this is kind of a, a compilation video of compilations of different topics. We're doing everything orthogonal here besides orthogonal diagonalization. So we have orthogonal complements, orthogonal projections, orthogonal sets, uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So let's, uh, let's get going. Let A be an M by N matrix. If W is the column space of, column space of A transpose, let's not think about the column space of A transpose. Let's think about the row space of A. That makes things a lot easier because we know that the row space of A is always orthogonal to the null space of A. And, and that's literally the question. There's, there's nothing else to that one. Uh, and because all they're asking for is the orthogonal complement. And we know that the, uh, the thing that's always orthogonal is the null space. Yeah. Okay. Suppose that W consists of all vectors X, Y, Z, such that X plus three Y minus two Z is equal to zero. What, which of the following is a basis for uh, the orthogonal complement of W? Well, this one is almost equally easy. We know back from Calc 3 that the uh, vector, that the, the normal vector to a plane equation like this is just, is just uh, the coefficients on x, y, and z. So 1, 3, negative 2 is the vector that is always orthogonal, that is always orthogonal to uh, that plane right there. And that's, that's literally our answer. There's, uh, there's, again, nothing else to that one. 18. Consider R2 as a as an, a Euclidean an Euclidean space with respect to the inner product, the standard inner product. Let V be the line spanned by 5, 8, which is the equation of the line that represents the orthogonal complement of V. So let's graph this out. We can do this graphically uh, pretty pretty easily. So uh, 5, 8 means that for every five units of X, uh, I'll, I'll just use X, X and Y. There we go. Uh, for every five units of X, we go up eight units of Y. So there is our there is our line right there uh, with a slope of with a slope of eight fifths. So in order to get in order to get an equation of a line that is an orthogonal that is always orthogonal to this, we don't want a slope of eight fifths. We want a slope of negative uh, five eighths, and so that uh, will go. Wait, sorry. Yeah, negative five over eight. So for every for every eight units we go down here, we will go up uh, five. We will go up five units. So it's a slope of negative five over eight. Okay, great. So what is the equation for the equation for this line? Well. 5y must be equal to negative 8x, and thus uh, 5, 5y five plus 8x is equal to 0. Uh, 5, 5y plus 8x, there we go. You could also solve this uh, just by looking at, so if we have 5 and 8 here, uh, what can we dot product with that to get 0? Well, that would be negative 8 and 5. And uh, we can write this in equation form as negative 8x is equal to 5y. We can add that over and we get exactly what we already solved for. 16, suppose that ABC is orthogonal to both of these vectors. Which of the following is true? So this is a, this is a cross product in disguise. We can just take the cross product of 3, 4, negative 2, and 4, 2, negative 3 to get the vector. Uh, that is always orthogonal, um, just like this this one is, to both of these other vectors. So this cross product gives us uh, gives us what? Negative twelve plus four is negative eight. Then we have negative eight plus nine is one, and six minus sixteen is negative ten. Okay, great. Um, so then looking through these answer choices, the only one that makes sense given this cross product, if we write this uh, as, so we have A, B, C, we know that this should be proportional to negative 8, 1, negative 10. A over C will just be a proportion, well, um, it should be, it should be proportional to, yeah, 8 over negative 10, which is 4 over 5. 
So that, that makes sense right there. Okay, so for a real matrix, suppose it's row echelon form is given here. Let V be the null space of A and W be uh, the, orth the orthogonal complement of that null space. What is the dimension of W? So the orthogonal complement to the null space, like we've talked about earlier, is the row space. And the dimension of the row space is equal to uh, the rank of a transpose. And the rank of a transpose is equal to the number of pivots in A. And so our answer is 2. 20, W is the span of U1 and U2 given here. Let's find the orthogonal projection of Y onto W. So that is going to be the orthogonal projection of Y onto W will be given by Y dot U1 over U1 dot U1 multiplied by the vector U1 plus Y dot U2 over U2 dot U2 multiplied by the vector U2. So let's compute, uh, ugh, sorry, let's start computing everything and uh, filling in our values. Y dot U1 will be 6 plus 10 minus 1, so 15, and then we're dividing it by U1 dot U1, which is 25 plus 4 plus 1, which is 30, so we get 1 half multiplied by U1, which is 2, 5, negative 1, and then we're adding uh, y dot u2, which is negative 6 plus 3, so negative 3, divided by u2 dot u2, which is 6, so this becomes negative 1 half, multiplied by u2, negative 2, 1, 1. Let's multiply both of these guys by 2 to make the computation a little easier, as long as we remember to divide by 2 in the end, and we get 4, 4, and negative 2. Uh, dividing by 2 gives us 2, 2, 2, 2, negative 1, which is our answer. Okay, number 22. So I had uh, tremendous difficulties with this problem in the past. Um, literally 20 seconds ago, I had to cut the video, uh, but I, fi I figured it out. So this one is different. This problem is different from, for example, this problem uh, in that there's an extra step that you have to do before you can really solve it. So we know that the distance from a vector to a subspace spanned by uh, some, some other vectors uh, is the magnitude of y minus the orthogonal projection of y onto those two uh, elements. The thing is, they have to be orthogonal. Uh, U and V have to be orthogonal. If we take a look here, these two are already orthogonal. We, uh, their dot product is 6 minus 6, which is 0, but the dot product of these two is negative 2. So that's no good. So we have to do a mini little uh, Gram-Schmidt process kind of thing. And uh, we, we say that, we can say that V1 is just U. Uh, so that's negative 2, 0, 0. There's our first orthogonal uh, basis vector. And V2, we have to say that that's V, uh, this, this V, so 1, 2, negative 1 minus its projection onto u. So that is v dot u, which is negative 2, negative 2 over uh, u dot u, which is 4, multiplied by u, negative 2, 0, 0. So canceling some things out, 1 half, so negative 1 there, we can, we can uh, see that v2 becomes 0, 2, negative 1. These two are orthogonal, and now we can uh, get going. So this, so now that we have things in this form, we can apply this formula and we will get our correct answer. So y minus y hat uh, is the same as computing y, so negative 1, negative 5, 10, minus uh, y's projection onto this new v1 that we have here, which is really the same as u, but uh, whatever, which is uh, 2, and we're dividing that by v1 dot v1, which is 4 multiplied by v1, negative 2, 0, 0. This will become plus 1 half, so plus 1. So we get a 0 there. And then we're subtracting v2 dot y, that's negative 20, divided by v2 dot v2, which is 5. So this becomes plus 4 multiplied by v2, 0, 8, negative 4. I'm uh, 
factoring that in. Now this becomes 0, 3, 6, and the magnitude, the magnitude of this guy is the square root of 36 plus 9, which is root 45, which we can say uh, that's, that's 9 times 5 in there, so 3 times root 5. And there's our answer. That's satisfying. I was really annoyed by that question in the past. Uh, and so I ended up doing it with least squares, which is also possible. 17, let's find the distance from the vector y to the subspace spanned by these two other vectors. So these are orthogonal. We don't have to do anything uh, ahead of time. And uh, let's, let's get going. We're just computing y, 1, 0, negative 2, minus y hat. So we'll need y dot u1. That's 2 minus 6, so negative 4, divided by u1 dot u1, which is 18 uh, plus 4 is 22, multiplied by u1, 2, negative 3, 3, and then we're also subtracting uh, y's projection onto u2, which is y dot u2, so 3 plus 2 is 5, and uh, over u2 dot u2, which is 11, multiplied by u2, 3, 1, negative 1. So these are definitely the scariest uh, numbers you run into here. And, and I, I got to say, these are pretty, these are pretty scary. This, this becomes plus 2 over 11. And yeah, this, this, is not, this is not very fun to deal with. What we can do, though, is multiply everything inside there by 11 and factor a 1 over 11 out. We get 11, 0, negative 22 plus 4, negative 6, 6, minus 15, 5, negative 5. And we can uh, compute this and then find its magnitude. And we should, we should be good. So in here, we'll get 1 over 11 multiplied by what vector? So 11 plus 4 minus 15 is 15 minus 15, so that's 0. Then... Uh, we get negative 11 here, and negative 22 plus 11 becomes negative 11. So this reduces this reduces down to 0, negative 1, negative 1, and that magnitude is root 2. 4, we have an orthogonal set here. Which of the following is true? So this is the same kind of uh, cross product in disguise that I was talking about earlier. So we can cross 1, negative 3, 0. 3, 1, negative 1, and get, and get the general form of a vector that we know to be orthogonal uh, to both of these guys. So that will give us 3, 1, and uh, 10. And so x over z should be 3 over 10. Yeah, that, that, that's all there is. Oh, wait, and that, that's all there is in this entire set, too. So there we go. Um, that's, that's orthogonal complements, orthogonal everything. Yeah, hopefully that was pretty helpful. Um, if, you're, if you're kind of, you know, re relearning uh, all this orthogonal stuff, I would recommend to go straight from this to the Gram-Schmidt process because that's just a bunch more practice of exactly this, and probably, you know, from the Gram-Schmidt process uh, to orthogonal diagonalization, maybe? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, a, I, I don't, I don't decide what you do. You get to do whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, go, go do that, whatever that is.